in this demonstration I'm going to take a look at importing a 3D model from an external application. In this case we're going to import a Rhino 3D model, add a setting to it and add some detail onto the actual shank itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new project. In the new project section under the assembly I can import a whole range of different files. So if I just pull down here we can see we have triangle models and surface models. The triangle model section we have 3DA, 3DP, 3DS files, DXF, STL, U3D and OBJ files. And under this in the surface models we have 3DM, DGK, S, SLD, PRT and IGIS files. In this case I'm going to be using a 3DM file which happens to be a Rhino file. So I'm going to open this Rhino ring. So when this Rhino ring comes in, we'll see it's just the actual shank of the ring itself. And it's something that would be slightly more complicated to model within Smith itself. So we can see here we have these actual bands linking around the edge of the actual shank itself. Now I just need to add a setting to this. Now the likelihoods are with this style of ring, I'm not actually going to machine this on a CNC. I'd more likely rapid prototype this to keep in the edges and the actual bit where the bands overlap. Now using the mesh library, the component library, I have the choice here to use actual um, import shanks if I wanted to. So we have a wide range of shanks there. I'll just open one of these to show you exactly what it looks like. So I'll just scroll to the bottom and use a twisted shank and see exactly what this looks like. Quite a large shank. I'm just going to delete this. And I'm actually going to use a setting. The setting I'm going to use will be a square setting. So I'm going to use this setting here. I'm going to have it at the size of a 3mm. And I'm then just going to nudge this into place. So I'm just nudging this up until I get it exactly as I want it. And there we have our setting brought into place on our shank. Now if I wanted to now, I could view it in whatever colour material I'm going to make this ring from. Or I could create a video of this ring actually rotating. So it will create a video of the ring actually spinning so your customer will be able to see the whole ring moving round. I also have the ability to actually export this ring for rapid prototyping so I can save it out as an OBJ, a DMT or an STL file. Now I'm actually going to um, 3 axis CNC this ring so I won't be able to machine in this part and re behind there. So what I'm actually going to do now is actually create this ring into a model. So if I select create rotary relief it will then flatten this ring out into a model for me so I can actually start to model on the shank itself. So here we can see it positioning the ring into place for me. If I just turn off my master, here we have the ring. As I said, I'm not bothered about this cutout detail here. And I'm just going to put some text around the shank itself. So if I turn on my preview layer, create myself a nice new layer. 
I'm actually going to type some text just along here. So I'm going to open my text tool. I'm going to change the size. And my actual font itself. So we'll go with something quite basic. I'm just going to type in Jewel Smith. And adjust my line spacing. And then just move this onto my ring itself and then scale this down to fit actually on one arm of the shank. So I'm now going to just subtract this into the model itself. If we take a look at the shank we can now see we have Jewel Smith cut into the side. Now we could go into a lot more detail and on this section here we could sink a, um, a gem in there as well and we could go through all of these and sink them in. But for now I'm just going to show you how we can add this back to the model and how we can view the changes on this. So using the mesh creator we're going to close it with the back relief. So the mesh creator takes over our old add to master. And then when the triangles are created, we can just say add to project and this will add it back to our project. Again, we can work out the actual weight of the ring. We're just going to add it to the project and it will tell me it's successfully been added to the project. And if I just close this model down and view this within my assembly, turn my assembly on, I'll have my ring with my text cut into it. Possibly if I'd created some new gems as well, the gems could be sunk into this with my setting in place and I could have this ready for machining. To machine it, I use the 3D machining wizard and I work my way through the wizard to actually get my finished machining of the ring. Now I'm not going to do that. It takes a few minutes to go through this process. But what we've seen from this demonstration, how we can import a model from a third party source. So in this case, it happened to be a Rhino file, but it could come from any of the other actual 3D packages out there including our own Delcam designer package and actually manage to model this and make edits on the ring itself how I could actually export it for rapid prototyping or how I could actually machine it with an art cam itself for um, 3D CNC machining of the ring